Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to welcome you to our webinar for the latest Transport Research and Innovation Grant Competition, TRIG 2022. Um, my name is Bex, Rebecca Golding, um, and I work for the Connected Places Catapult. And my team and I have been delivering TRIG programs um, since 2019, um, but this program will be our best yet. We're very excited um, to tell you all about it and to help guide you as you prepare your application. Um, just a note today that our webinar is being recorded um, and the link will be made available for you um, within a few days to rewatch in case you need to do so. Um, and the slides from today will also be available for you to download next to the recording um, on the CPC's website. Um, if you do have a question throughout today, please feel free to use the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. Um, we will endeavour to answer everybody's questions during the webinar. Um, however, we do have another session um, specifically for Q&A on the 5th of January um, in case there are outstanding questions. Um, slide please, Kat. Thank you. So, um, as you can see, we've got a pretty packed agenda for you today. Um, what we really wanted to do is to invite our challenge owners from the DFT. Um, to talk to you so you can hear directly from them about the sorts of technologies and solutions they are interested in funding within TRIG 2022. Um, so after we've heard from our challenge owners, um, I'll be taking you through some sort of hints and, and tips about uh, preparing your application um, and the application process before we do our usual um, Q&A. Um, but right now, can I please introduce my friend and colleague, James Tickler, who is Head of Innovation at the, 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 at the Department of Transport um, he's a long-time orchestrator and champion of TRIG, um, and he'd like to introduce the 2022 programme to you. Thank you, James. Uh, thanks very much, Bex. Um, hello to everyone. Yes, this is uh, 2022 TRIG. Finally, uh, finally, we're here talking to you about uh, launching it. Um, as you may have noticed, we had some slight delays uh, over the summer. There was uh, some interesting business in government. Um, but those are now in the past, um, and we are here, and it's great, uh, great to have what should be, um, and I said this last year, but again, the biggest trig um, we've done um, so far. So uh, trig, of course, the Transport Research um, and Innovation Grants, um, which have been going now since uh, 2013. Um, and this will be the I think, 15th um, competition we've done, which is which is great. So as, um, as Beck said, I'm the head of innovation um, in the DFT office for, well, sorry, in SciTech, uh, formerly the Office of Science in the Department of Transport. And this is the um, team that supports uh, the chief scientific advisor and helps the DFT um, do the best it can with science, uh, technology, um, and innovation. So um, for those of you who, who know TRIG, um, it's, it's modest. It's, uh, it's a small uh, grant program, um, and it's, it's totally here to support you, to support innovators, to help you do what you do. Um, it is unique um, in transport and actually in, in many ways in that it funds across all transport technology and all application areas. So this means we have, we have ideas from, from materials to algorithms, things that fly, things that travel under the ground, um, we have standalone apps, and then we also have some some applications which look at small components of, of enormous machines. So a great variety of projects uh, and people in TRIG, which is uh, both uh, fascinating, uh, but also a bit of a challenge to uh, for us to manage some of the time. Um, we're really proud also um, in driving um, progress um, in diversity and inclusion. This is something we've been working really hard on. Um, in the last few years um, to make it clear that it's a priority for us um, and to help drive um, diversity, particularly in, in, the, in transport innovation, uh, which can sometimes um, suffer from a lack, of, a lack of diversity. So I think for, for you, for you, the, uh, the innovative trick should also have a unique offer. It's not just money, which, which government does provide in terms of grant funding to support innovation, and, and rightly so, um, but it also um, offers access which is quite a difficult thing to get. So for projects we fund that are good, um, you know, we will be here um, in the um, 
um, and the SciTech team will be here to help you have the right conversations with the right people in DFT to help plot your next steps. And as well, of course, you've got the innovation might of the Connected Places Catapult in your corner. So all, all the ingredients uh, for success is what we hope for. And we have had um, some great successes. So there are four Trig alumni that I've uh, spoken to this year who raised over a million pounds um, in funding each. So from, from previous years, which is great to see. And we've also seen uh, more recent um, Trig recipients um, turning up in, in, in other support schemes like FOAC, which is the first of a kind in rail, and um, the CDMC, the Clean Maritime Demonstration Competition, uh, which is also great. And so TRIG is not just about showing that early promise um, and and having those um, uh, those really successful projects. It's also about training fast. And it's another unique aspect of TRIG is that we're we're happy with either as long as as long as the idea is good and they need to be tried out. Um, we want to help you try them out. Um, so it's not just uh, me that thinks uh, and Bex of course that think uh, Trig is great. Also, some of our bosses think it's good. And so right here we have Jesse Norman, who's recently turned to travel um, now as a, as a senior minister, and he's a big, big supporter of Trig. And last week we had much excitement when his ultimate boss, the PM, has also announced that he was a a fan of Trig on LinkedIn, and this is—I um, I don't think we've had Prime Ministerial uh, uh, response to Trig in the past, um, and it's great to see. But it just shows uh, not only sort of the uh, the importance of, of sort of transport innovation uh, in general, but also what it means to to us right now. So we're uh, th this this government is very uh, very interested in growth and how we drive growth, um, and Trig is a great way to, to sort of to seed the transport innovation ecosystem and to help uh, help drive growth in the future. So, as I said, very, very excited that we were able to launch, uh, will hopefully be the, the biggest trig uh, so far this year. And I'm very, very much looking forward to, um, to seeing it and hearing about your ideas. Thanks. Back to you. Lovely. Thank you so much. Um, OK, so um, we are now going to be handing over to our um, DFT challenge owners. Um, I'm delighted to introduce to you um, our first speaker, Charlotte Kelty, who is head of Net Zero Implementation. Um, and Charlotte is going to talk to us about challenge one, which is local transport decarbonisation. Thanks a lot, Charlotte. Thanks, Rebecca. It's, um, it's lovely to be here today for the launch of TRIG. Um, so I am head of Net Zero Implementation at DFT. And I'm part of the team that's focused on both setting the strategy for decarbonisation across the department, along with ensuring the delivery of the transport decarbonisation plan. Part of what my team do is we lead on place-based decarbonisation strategy. As I'm sure you will know, transport is the largest emitting sector of greenhouse gas emissions across the UK economy, contributing 27% of all UK emissions. And of this, road vehicles produce over 90% of domestic emissions. In July last year, we published the Transport Decarbonisation Plan, which sets the sector on a path to net zero by 2050. In this, we highlighted the importance of delivering decarbonisation through a place-based approach, recognising the, the benefits and opportunities it can bring across the country. We want every place in the UK to be cleaner, greener and healthier, and to make places more prosperous and pleasant environments to spend time in and enjoy. Local areas have a really key role to play in meeting the UK's target to achieve net zero by 2050. And a place-based approach to transport decarbonisation recognises this. And it's all about recognising the collective importance of each individual city, town, village, and the unique challenges faced and opportunities offered by these areas in meeting net zero targets. As part of this, we want to support local areas to make the decisions and find the solutions that can help them deliver the practical changes they need to make. Finding innovative solutions to local challenges that have the potential to be scaled up and adopted more widely will be a really crucial part in reducing transport emissions and accelerating the transition to net zero, both in the UK and world widely. So that's the why and the challenge we're facing, but what are we looking for under TRIG? We're looking for innovative technologies and approaches that have the potential to accelerate the decarbonisation of local transport systems. These projects should take a place-based approach Demonstrating an understanding of the needs of local communities and areas. 
while also potentially having the possibility to be scaled up across the UK in future. They should also have the potential to help deliver carbon reductions. This sounds like a lot, it's a very long list, and we know it's not going to be easy. Um, on the next slide, um, and in the grant specification, there's a list of the kind of projects we're looking for. Um, we've put together this long list in partnership with policy leads from across DFT, and also from our conversations with stakeholders. So we've been talking to our colleagues at Active Travel, Future Transport, and Share Mobility Policy, amongst others. You'll see a lot of these are really cross-cutting, and some of them can be quite tricky to solve. But within these are massive opportunities, both reducing emissions and delivering improvements to not only transport people's, people's lives. So to give an example of the kind of thing we might be looking for, it could be a project that uses technologies to understand how to better connect multiple modes of transport via measures such as mobility hubs. Or it could be ways to encourage the public to adopt a greener transport choices, or possibly tools to address the really big challenges faced by rural areas. I'm really delighted that we've been able to put this as a challenge in there, in TRIG this year, and to make this a focus. And I really look forward to seeing all the exciting, innovative solutions in your applications and the ones that eventually get funded. Back to you, Rebecca. Great, thank you so much, Charlotte. A very, very important and um, interesting challenge there, thank you. Um, so our next speaker is Kate Drury, who is head of UK Shore R&D projects in DFT's Maritime Directorate. Um, Kate will talk about um, challenge two, um, maritime decarbonisation. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, hi, everyone. Um, as Rebecca said, I'm Kate. I'm head of UK Shore R&D projects in DFT. And I'm delighted to be here. I'm really excited that TRIG22 is now live. Um, I'm here to talk about the maritime decarbonisation call, as it says on the slide. Um, and firstly, I just wanted to briefly touch on why UK Shore is funding this and, and who UK Shore are, what we do. So within transport, uh, maritime emissions are really significant. Uh, UK domestic shipping alone emits more greenhouse gases than buses and rail combined. And without intervention, emissions from domestic shipping are only going to continue to grow. Um, we know that the lifespan of vessels is normally between about 25 to 30 years. And that means we need to take action now and start bringing in cleaner technologies and cleaner solutions to enable us to achieve net zero by 2050. And DFT is supporting the decarbonisation of the UK maritime sector through a two-pronged approach. So the first part is R&D funding and investment through the UK Shore programme, and the second part is through a comprehensive policy and regulatory programme. So UK Shore is the UK shipping office for reducing emissions. It's a new programme um, that was announced in March of this year with £206 million of R&D funding to focus on decarbonising our domestic maritime sector, um, addressing supply and demand side barriers and developing the infrastructure and consumer confidence we need to enable us um, uh, to, to implement clean maritime solutions. So our UK shore interventions are aimed at addressing different barriers to maritime decarbonisation over a range of technology readiness levels. And we want to create a pipeline of innovation projects um, that flow through the different UK shore interventions and progress up the technology readiness level scale towards market readiness. So the TRIG programme and some of our other early research grants are kind of at the beginning of that pipeline. Um, and they will help us to develop um, innovation on in maritime decarbonisation by building a really solid UK research base and feeding projects into our other UK shore initiatives, such as the Clean Maritime Decarbonisation Competition, um, which has already provided over £35 million to 86 different projects um, for feasibility studies and early trials and demonstrations. So UK Shore is providing £400,000 um, for TRIG 2022 for this maritime decarbonisation call for projects um, grants worth up to £30,000 each. So we're looking to fund about 13 projects or up to 13 projects. Can I have the next slide, please? Um, so we have scoped the call to exclusively fund three specific areas which are not currently being funded by our other initiatives to ensure there are no gaps in our strategic approach and to also create a foundation in these areas um, that allow our maritime sector to make the most of the opportunities um, that are going to become available in the future. So there's some suggested projects on the slide here. Um, and the detailed scope on the TRIG webpage um, grant specification goes into further detail. But the three key areas um, uh, within scope of the maritime decarbonisation call 
are firstly solutions that focus on large deep sea shipping vessels only so that includes but is not limited to cargo ships tankers and cruise ships but we're focused on the large deep sea shipping um, so that could then be looking at vessel propulsion, wind propulsion, on vessel power generation and fuel production or other low carbon energy storage and management on those vessels. The second key area within the scope is smart shipping technologies and automation that deliver indirect savings uh, for any size of vessel. So we're, within that area, we're thinking about autonomy, digitization, better journey efficiencies and other smart shipping technologies. And then the third key area is projects that focus on supporting small and medium sized ports, harbours and marinas to decarbonise their operations where they have not yet begun to do so. So that final bit there is key. Um, we're including all types of shoreside solutions, fuel bunkering, charge points and energy management solutions, um, but the locations where uh, these projects are must not yet have started decarbonizing themselves um, and the intention is that these projects will allow them to then start creating decarbonization plans and get ready to exploit clean technologies as they become more commercially ready. So on that last area we don't have a fixed definition of small or medium ports, marina, marinas and harbours um, but we will require you in your bids to explain the size um, of your project and why you require this trick funding. Um, so they're the kind of three key areas we're, we're focusing on through the maritime decarbonisation call. Um, probably most importantly, the projects must have an innovative aspect, um, but that also includes projects, um, technology solutions being used in an innovative way outside of their original intended use. Um, but there, there's more on the grant specification website and happily we'll take some questions at the end, but I'll pause there for now and say thank you and hand back to Rebecca. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kate. Um, so next up we have Daryl. I'm going to absolutely butcher your surname, Daryl. Og Ogbefun. I'm so sorry. That's probably terrible. Um, so Daryl is head of freight R and D, um, and Daryl's going to talk to us about the third challenge, which is the future of freight. Thanks, Beck. <laughs> the G silent. Um, hi everyone, and thanks for your interest in Trick 2022. We're excited that it's generated this level of interest in the program. It's perhaps helpful if I, uh, well, I should start by introducing myself. I'm Daryl. Um, I lead freight R&D in logistics and logistics directorate, and we deal with the implementation of the future of freight plan. Um, we recognize that the freight sector would require government and industry to work in partnership. Um, as we build back from the pandemic and create a sustainable economic future with freight at its heart. The future of freight program is working collaboratively with the freight sector to develop our long-term plan in the future of freight plan. Um, and it looks across lots of all the modes of intermodality. It's a key part of the plan. Um, we see freight as a system which supports all our domestic and international supply chains. So freight and logistics touches on every aspect of life in the UK um, and the future freight plan, which we published in June, 2000, to, uh, June of this year, um, outlines government's commitment to supporting innovation in the freight sector to overcome real world freight problems. The purpose of the freight future freight core is to support innovation, innovation in ideas that have the potential to address the opportunities and challenges that face freight and logistics sector. And we see this as evolving in all aspects of the full spectrum of the innovation space. So for the TRIG 2022 call, we welcome projects that support government's commitment to supporting innovation in that space. Our aim is that this call attracts bids that deliver our future freight vision for freight and logistics sector that's cost efficient, um, reliable, resilient, economically sustainable. Um, Project. Sorry, can you hear me? Um, yes, that projects, was very ah, super. No worries. projects must have an innovative act, uh, an innovative aspect, and it's linked to the five priority areas in the future of freight plan. And our five priority areas are the national freight network, um, enabling the transition to net zero, planning, people and skills, and my personal favorite, technology and data enabled opportunities. So for the TRIP 2022 call, uh, next slide please. Uh, 
we've got these examples of possible projects. So you see that it cuts across all modes and it links more broadly to sort of our vision statements for the future of free plan. I'd, I'd encourage you all to read that. And we've got examples of possible projects that we can support in that space. So sustainability being core, traffic congestion, air quality, uh, use of data and data sharing between private actors, uh, management and capacity in the congested system and adaption or adaptation, should I say, of business models that are aligned rapidly with changing patterns and consumer behavior. I'm happy to take any questions later on, but for now we'll hand back to Bex. Lovely. Thank you so much, Daryl. I remember that sign at you. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Now, can I please introduce Asha? Um, Asha's been a long time collaborator of Trace. Really happy to have him on board today. Um, Asha is DFT's Head of Resilience um, Science Response, um, and he's going to take us through um, the uh, Challenge 4 on resilient transport um, to, or transport resilience, sorry, to severe weather and flooding. Thank you, Asha. Thanks for the introduction, Bex. Um, so I'm delighted to speak with you all about the uh, transport to, sorry, transport resilience to severe weather and flooding challenge. Um, so I work in the resilience science team in the Department for Transport, um, and that's one of the areas which we've been focusing on recently. So I'm going to describe some background and context to this call and why transport resilience to secure severe weather and flood is important to the department. So although given <laughs> Given the disruption um, caused to transport last week just from snow and cold weather, I'm sure you don't need too much persuading that it's a very important topic. Um, so in the, of kind of over the last year, we've seen significant impacts to the UK transport from severe weather. So in February, we saw storm Eunice, which produced the fastest wind gusts on record in England. And in July, temperatures exceeded 40 degrees for the first time ever, um, which all of which events led to kind of major transport disruption. Um, including widespread train cancellations, overturned vehicles and bridge closures. Um, this is all in the context of our climate, which is changing. I um, mean, in the future, we should see increasingly warmer, wetter winters and hotter, drier summers. And the transport network will need to adapt to this changing climate. So through this um, trigger innovation competition, um, we're seeking innovative technologies and approaches that will improve the resilience of the network to the growing risks posed by severe weather events and flooding. So the exact definitions of what's in and out of scope, um, I won't cover here, that's in the grant specification document. But as a summary, we're taking quite a broad approach to the scope of this innovation call. So we want to hear like a, about a really wide variety of your um, innovative ideas that are coming out there. So um, there are a few things that we're particularly looking for though, which I should probably mention. So firstly, we want ideas that if they're successfully proven to work, they have the potential to demonstrate a real rapid or sorry, rapid real world impact. Um, so this means that if we'd like you to have a clear and achievable plan about how you develop the idea after the trick funding ends, um, and really to understand the needs and, and maybe demonstrate links with potential customers to um, make sure that these things are actually deployable and usable. So the second thing is, is innovations that address extreme weather events. So um, maybe we'd want to focus less on the kind of everyday operational challenges which to be honest in the UK, we handle fairly well. Um, so that kind of normal bad weather, we might see kind of many times every year, but really to focus on innovative ideas that will help the transport network be resilient to the kind of climate extremes, which we've been seeing recently, we will see more in the future. Um, another thing that's probably worth mentioning is that we um, really wanna see both um, kind of innovative technologies, but also approaches where we really would encourage kind of uh, behavioral approaches um, or kind of systems approaches that aren't necessarily just a piece of tech that will fix it. Um, so in summary, um, we really want to support your innovative ideas and approaches to help reduce the impact of severe weather. Um, some examples which we could have would be um, an innovative nature, an innovative nature based solution that reduces the exposure of transport infrastructure to severe weather events or an innovative digital solution that reduces the cascading impacts which severe weather and flooding could have on the transport system. Maybe an innovative behavioral science solution to improve communications with passengers or staff during a severe weather event, or maybe even an innovative physical engineering solution that improves recovery times to allow transport to restart more quickly. Um, so I hope this is uh, kind of growing your interest in this KISS call. I'm really happy to answer any questions towards the end. Thank you.
Awesome. Thanks, Asha. It's lovely to hear that kind of DFT are interested not only in hearing about innovative technologies, but in innovative approaches, um, which is something that, yeah, Trig is definitely not shy of. Um, okay. Um, now we have um, Aisha Ahmed, um, who is representing the Transpennine route upgrade, um, and she's going to take us through Challenge 5, um, which is improving the rail passenger experience. Thanks, Aisha. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm very excited to be here to um, be presenting this theme as part of uh, TRIG this year. So, um, yes, I'm Aisha Ahmed. I'm from the Trans Pennine Route Upgrade. I'm a program client working on that. It's a very exciting um, program which is looking to um, modernise and to improve the route between um, the Trans Pennine, so that's Manchester to York via Leeds. Um, so, yeah, I'm here to talk about improving the rail customers' experience. Now, I appreciate that rail isn't necessarily the most glamorous of topic areas, but it is one of our key modes of transport, which connects people, businesses, and transport freight around um, the UK. Uh, great work is happening at the moment to improve rail with exciting new initiatives, such as the trans Route Upgrade um, and Northern Powerhouse Rail, um, which are all working to improve connectivity in the north, for example. It's just one of the, the things that we're doing. Now we have a real opportunity to modernize rail. Um, this is through things like new technology, sustainability, and looking at new methods for exploring construction, how we can make that even better, cheaper, and again, more sustainable. Um, but we also have an opportunity to modernize rail for, for customers and the people who are using the, the rail network in the UK. Um, so this call is looking to explore how we can modernize rail for the customer to increase its use, to have it fit in with, with modern life um, and to make it more accessible for the users. Um, among the potential applications, we'd like to explore the use of AI, VR, AR, but um, please don't feel that this is um, an absolute requirement. Uh, so if I can go on to the next slide, I can just look at um, a few of the projects which we could be looking at. Um, so as we have here, we've got things like exploring data um, to improve services such as you know the bus open data um, designing new tools to increase the safety of women in public transport so that's um, looking at uh, even at the station you know when they're on the platform for example um, and creating tools for encouraging mode shift and after tra uh, travel included um, also which I haven't put on the slide are things like looking at closing that gap at the station so the gap between the train and the platform making that easier for people with wheelchairs or push chairs to get on the train and get off the train um, and also the use of technology for example to increase signage at the station to make it easier for people to um, to get around the station uh, so that's just a, a little taste of what we would like to see in this in this call but it's you know it's quite broad and um, yeah we're very excited to see what you come up with and I'm here for any questions thank you fantastic thanks Moshe Okay, so um, last but not least, um, so as with all the other TRIG programmes that we've run, um, this year we'll have our traditional open call, um, and I'd like to bring James back if I can to give us some more details. Thanks, Bex. Um, so yes, as Bex says, uh, this year as, as ever, we also have an open call to, to complement um, the specific priority areas that uh, Charlotte, Kate, Daryl, um, Asha and Aisha um, have, have taken us through briefly just now. And I think just, just looking back at those uh, priority areas, there two, are two sort of common threads that, that I saw through, throughout. Um, one is around um, creating a vibrant transport innovation ecosystem, so ensuring we have a proper pipeline of new ideas and, and actually also new leaders coming through. Um, into transport to feed um, the, the other support mechanisms and, and to drive change, um, but also taking a systems approach, be that a systems approach to net zero or a systems approach to resilience, uh, freight, um, et cetera. And I think these two things are very central to, uh, to Trig's heart. Uh, next slide, slide please, Kat. Um, so just as a few um, examples of what we might uh, be hoping to see in the open call, because of course, um, anything that will improve transport, anything that speaks to DFT's strategic priorities, which you can um, find in the TRIG guidance, um, is very welcome in the open calls, anything that will improve um, transport. And we've got um, we've got a few examples of things uh, that we yet yeah, we might like to see um, if, if anybody's got any ideas that are sort of relevant to these, these requirement areas. So um, ideas that help 
quality of access uh, to the transport system because we know that people have different needs. We know that um, some people struggle to access the transport system as it is today and use it to the full uh, and, and hence live their lives to the full. So ideas in that, um, that space are very uh, exciting to us. Um, we're also uh, looking for, for low, low carbon fuel ideas. So ideas that might support the transition to, to net zero in various places um, in the transport system. Um, we're always interested in, in ideas that leverage data because there is day by day, there is more and more data out there. Um, the, the bus um, open data act, uh, one of my favorite geek transport facts is it's the first, uh, first piece of legislation to go through parliament after Brexit that took Brexit into, into account, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and opened up all, all bus data across the whole network. And the, the, that, that is, that is available uh, now, I think it's just in the last um, few months, this has uh, come into its full power. And so there's opportunities for all kinds of services that can be built upon the data that's available. Um, as Aisha was saying, uh, we're very interested in uh, the safety of women on the transport system, not just in rail, but also more broadly. Um, and this is um, this is an increasing area of priority within DFT and, and in government. So very keen to see some ideas there. Um, if we look um, at decarbonisation, um, we're probably going to have to change uh, the amount um, that we travel, how how we travel, um, and it's not just about electrification and, and hydrogen and low carbon fuels. It's also about modal shift and active travel. So really interested to see if there are, uh, to see if we can have any any bids in that area. Um, down the bottom of this list, but by mean by no means unimportant. Rural transport, I think. Uh, so I, I live near to London. I'm very used to the amazing transport system in London. Um, but if I lived in the countryside, I wouldn't have those benefits. I wouldn't have access to a transport system uh, like the one I enjoy at the moment. So what can we do to bring some of those benefits and some of uh, the, the great technology enabled um, things that we that we expect in cities that we're used to in cities? How can we bring that to the, to the rural world, world and help? Um, help people who live outside of cities travel smarter and, and more in the way that they um, um, they want to. And so I think we've got we've got you know just just a few um, priorities in here, but there are loads um, and loads of things that we um, we'd be interested in. Um, so you know if you've got an idea and if you think it can help, please do tell us. Back to you, Bex. Wonderful. Thank you so much, James. Okay, I've got you now. Um, I'm going to talk about the application process. Thank you so much to everyone who's um, asked questions using the Q&A function. Some really, really fantastic questions in there. Um, I'm going to answer most of them live because I think quite a lot of people will probably be wondering the same stuff. So we'll, uh, we'll cover that in the Q&A section. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, take you through some hints and tips when it comes to applying. Um, I have had a quick glance at who's with us today. Um, I do recognise quite a few names, but there are some brand new names that I've never come across before, so that's fantastic. Um, so it's really important for us to be able to sort of give some uh, really good advice here before people kind of start thinking about uh, how to frame their application. Um, could you go to the next slide, please, Pat? Um, so I just wanted this is a very busy slide. I do apologise, but um, and it will be available afterwards for you to digest. But um, some uh, information here about you know why to apply for Trig, and, and James would have alluded to some of this already. Um, so the key features of Trig um, are that so Trig is a hundred percent funded. So unlike other sort of um, innovation grant based programs, Trig is a hundred percent funded. Um, and the lovely thing is, although you know the money's brilliant and very welcome, um, but really um, you do get the benefit of working closely with the Department for Transport and accessing the CPC um, Connected Places Catapults wealth of um, expertise, both in the transport and um, city place domain. Um, we do um, at CPC, we have an SME, um, an academic engagement sort of networks and, and programs. So um, by sort of working on TRIG, um, you'll be able to kind of enter um, those kind of wider programs to, to receive sort of a wealth of support that's available in the catapult outside of the program. Um, so as, as Jane said as well, so these are these are designed, TRIG is designed to offer smaller, smaller grants. So what we what TRIG is designed to do is to help you to succeed or to fail fast, to enable that um that small pot of funding to um, to prove a concept, to to arrive at um arrive at, at 
a validation of a technology or, or a solution. Um, you can apply for a grant of up to £30,000. Um, we're anticipating around about 60. So you can already see, get a feeling of the fact that this is going to be a large cohort. And throughout TRIG, you're not just sort of given the money and then told to go away and get on with things. Um, we really do encourage a community aspect. So we, we, we bring, um, bring you together sort of once a month um, to engage with your colleagues and to identify opportunities for collaboration. Um, we, we, we bring our challenge owners and other policy leads from the DFT and, and, and other industry leaders um, in to, um, into the conversation so you can kind of engage with them and, and really learn from each other and, and get some fantastic insights. Um, so it is, like I say, the money is, is great and it does plug that cash flow um, sort of gap, but it is, it is more than that. It's about having that credibility of having the DFT stamp on your research, which is really important. And um, just some other information there you'll see about sort of the grant payments. The lovely thing about TRIG, another lovely thing, um, is that instead of you kind of going away and doing three months work and then invoicing us for um, uh, the, the money in arrears, we give you an upfront payment of 60% of your total project cost right at the beginning to enable, you know, if you need to go out and buy things or start kind of get your project underway, you can, you can do that. Um, and then the, the remaining 40% will be uh, released upon um, the um, submission of your final report at the end of the programme. So everything's really kind of, we design it so it's easy to access. We, we are an enabling fund. We, we want to enable you to kind of crack on with, you, with your project. Um, so just a few small points here. So there was a question in the chat. Um, from somebody saying, um, I, I am an individual, um, I'm a student, I, I don't have a registered company and, and they want to apply for TRIG. Um, unfortunately, um, you do have to um, represent um, either an, a small business, small or large business, but really TRIG is geared towards the kind of more small businesses um, or, or a university. So you can't be um, kind of applying as a, a kind of freelance academic and you can't be applying as an individual. You do need to have a registered company. Um, and that company needs to be based in the UK. Um, in terms of consortiums, consortia, um, we are very, very welcoming to consortiums. You don't have to apply as a, as a consortium. Um, and universities or SMEs can lead. It, it really doesn't matter. Um, we we do love to see to see groups to see consortiums being um, developed and built. If you would like to apply um, with a partner and you you haven't got anybody in mind, um, you could always. I mean, it, time is fairly short because the uh, the deadline is the fifteenth of January. But if you do want to kind of see if we can help in that, um, please do get in touch and, and we can sort of discuss your requirements and see if we can maybe pair you up with someone. Um, we can always we can always try. Um, okay. Um, next slide, please, Pat. So, in terms of the um, timeline, so Trig launched um, last week on the twelfth of December, and the closing date is the fifteenth of January. Um, today, of course, nineteenth, we have our webinar, um, and then because there's likely to be quite a lot of applications, and we wanted. Um, information to be fresh in people's minds, we decided to hold another Q&A session on the 5th of January. Um, so please do join for that. Um, then we have two other sessions. So one on the 9th of January, one on the 11th of January. What we're, what we're going to do is um, invite um, anyone who wants to apply to TRIG to book a 30 minute one-to-one -one application support session with um, somebody at the Catapult who can kind of discuss your, your ideas and um, help you to um, decide whether or not TRIG might be right for you. Um, and there's the email address down at the bottom there if you do wish to book one of those sessions. They will be on a first come first serve basis, of course. Um, Kat, next slide, please. So in terms of the evaluation process, nice and easy. Um, we are, uh, after uh, middle of January 15th, when the application uh, window closes, we will be reviewing all of our bids and conducting um, interviews. So interviews are a really crucial part of TRIG and it's a really fun, lovely way to um, be able to, to meet all of our innovators before we award funding. Um, and we do that in February um, and then in uh, March we will be making our final uh, selection and awarding our funding. So all of the funding um, gets awarded by the Connected Place Catapult. So any contract and any or, or you know funding will be um, you, you'll contractually be engaged with the capital rather than the department. Um, 
Next slide, please, Pat. Okay, so some hints and tips on your application. Um, all applications are completed online digitally on um, CPC's community platform. So when you go to our opportunity page, the main trig page of the website, you just press the click, uh, apply now and it will take you through to a page that um, it, it looks like a CPC kind of branded page, but that is our trig um, application platform. You will have to register as a user on that platform if you're not um, already a, a, a registered user, and then you can go ahead and complete your application. Now we did get a very good question in the chat, which I've answered privately from somebody saying, um, if they um, want to work separately on a Word document at the same time as sort of completing their digital application, can they do that? And that is a really good idea. So what we're going to do is create a Word-based application form for you just to kind of use to, to draft your answers before then you copy and paste them into the digital version. Um, I cannot stress this enough. Please do read the trig documents before you start your application. Um, they are written in a way that will give you those crucial answers to first of all decide if triggers for you and secondly to be able to frame your application in a way that is will make it will give you the best chance of it being funded so it, it will help you to understand actually what our assessors are looking for in the bids what needs to really jump off the page at us um this third point Again, a really important one. I personally am not a technical person. So when I read a bid, I have to be able to understand it, as does you know somebody on the street. That's what you need to kind of think. So while we all know how amazingly smart all of you guys are out there and you want to describe the technical aspects of your project, what I would really implore you to more focus on is the impact of, of what the technology is likely to have rather than an in-depth analysis of how it works because we're not necessarily technical people so we're not going to understand obscure jargon um, we really would prefer um, our innovators to um, write in layman's terms it helps us tremendously um, there are word counts um, on the platform we are not expecting chapter and verse in these applications they are ve not very long at all so please do keep within them in fact I don't think it even lets you go on um, if you've gone over the word count so just bear that in mind Okay, I really, really just wanted to take you through very quickly what the application will look like, other than the general sort of questions like, you know, uh, what's your name and <laughs> things like that, um, and you know, general questions about your the the company that you're or university that you're representing. Um, the main bulk of the application is based around these six um, areas. Um, I as I said before what we're looking for for these answers is outlined in our application guidance so i would strongly suggest reading that but i'll just give you a very quick flavor of what we're looking for so the first area is challenge so we need you to describe what challenge you are responding to but explain why this is a priority for the dft the next section is solution. How does your solution address the challenge that you've identified? Provide details here on the novelty. So I think Asher alluded to this before. So what we're not looking for is solutions that no one has ever heard of because they're so new and novel and it's completely an amazing thing that someone's just thought of and it's never been done. That's not really what our idea of true innovation is. It could be a concept that is being applied for the first time in a new way, but we need you to pick out where the novelty is and explain that to us. Um, it could be um, some technology that has a component in it that's novel, that, 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 and that's what's made it uh, really innovative and new. It doesn't have to be the whole thing in its entirety that, that's innovative. So I just wanted to touch on here, so James talked about this before, how important inclusive practice is. So Trig, we, it, it, it kind of so there's two aspects of this so first of all we want to make sure that trig is open to all so trig is welcoming to everybody regardless of your of where you've come from what you what uh, access issues you might have if you've got a disability if you where your background whatever we, we're welcoming so on that vein please let us know if you're having problems completing your application you want to talk about it please let us know we're more than happy to support you on the other side of it though it's so important that you tell us 
how you are going to design your product in an inclusive way and a human centered way and how you've thought about your end user in your design process or how you will think about your end user. And in that way, we want you to bring that into your solution element. So tell us what you're doing to engage with your end user. Are you doing research and how you're doing it and why this is important? That's the section that we want you to tell us where you, we, you want that. We want you to feed that in within that solution section. Um, impact, a really important section, clearly, for the DFT. Um, please do make sure your bid is impact focused. Um, tell us how there is a potential for high impact. Who is this going to impact? Where, how, what, what, where, who, why, how? Um, if we can't, the impact's not jumping out and hitting us in the face, it needs to. Um, exploitation, sorry, one of my colleagues talked about this. It might have been Asher again, um, but we want to, although TRIG, as I said, we, TRIG funds early stage um, projects to, to the point of proof of concept, which is fantastic. However, we want to know from you what's next. So what's your, what's your plan? What's your route to market? Have you, are, are you, is there an addressable market? What have you done already to engage your market? Um, and what is your route to commercialization? It might be a long way in the future, but we'd, li we'd like to see when, when September rolls around, 2023, and you, you're graduating from TRIG, in your mind, where, what's your aspiration for taking this forward? Um, um, project management project budget you've seen it before a million times give us confidence that your project is bona fide oh uh, yeah we know what you're going to do we know exactly how you're going to get there you've set out the milestones and deliverables really clearly um the risks please do tell us about risks um what's the skill of your team talk to tell us like big thumbs up like what what's your why are you experienced like where did your experience lie and where are your skills and what makes you the best team to be able to deliver this project a lot of the novelty is around your team. It's not always about the technology. It's about, well, we're actually best placed to deliver this project because we have these shared experiences that make us the best team to be able to deliver this project. Um, okay, quick note about the project budget. Um, 30K and under, you can apply for through TRIG. Um, if, you're, if you have a project in mind, it's going to cost you much more than 30K. That's fine, you can, but we can only give you 30K for it. Um, in your project budget, in the guidance, it will tell you what the applicable costs are. And in your budget table, it splits it out. So the first thing is resource. You can subcontract um, and you can subcontract to overseas um, contractors. Uh, that's fine. You can also purchase from overseas. Um, please be sensible with your day rates two to three hundred pounds is is okay when you're kind of getting up to the 600 700 pounds it, the dft will will sort of raise an eyebrow and just you know we we need you to justify those huge costs um, we'd like to see kind of on the lower end if possible in terms of day rates um you can charge consumables equipment lab costs uh testing costs uh any direct costs that um enable will enable you to you, to complete your project any overheads have to be included in the resource and you can't charge us the VAT you your business has to be VAT registered because we would expect all businesses and universities to be able to claw the the VAT back from HMRC um we have guidance on that in our application guidance document but please do get in touch if you need if you're not if you're unclear and you need um clarification on any of that Last point is that TRIG is a government grant, so it is um, all innovators who apply for it will be subject to subsidy rules. Um, there was a couple of questions in the chat which I'll, I'll ask, so people are saying well, I've already applied for Innovate UK funding, am I still eligible? The answer is absolutely, just as long as you are within your uh, subsidy allowance the three-year rolling period, I think it's something like 325,000 special drawing rights in the three-year period. But we will send you our subsidy compliance declaration documents so you have your legal team go through them just to check that you're you're eligible to receive this grant. Right, <laughs> I think that's probably enough information for now. Um, there's the email address again, please do get in touch if I've missed anything or you're not sure about anything. I think we can jump straight into the Q&A.
Um, we've got 47, 48 questions. Um, we'll try and answer as many of them as we possibly can. No, I'm so sorry. I, what am I doing? Donya. <laughs> I forgot. Go back. <laughs> Donya, hi. Thank you so much. No, not that one. Sorry, Kat. <laughs> For Donya. <laughs> we've got Donya. She just wanted to um, talk about her success. Thank you. My name is Donya Haji Elisade. I'm a senior lecturer and director of employability at the School of Sustainability, Civil and Environmental Engineering at the University of Surrey. So our project was focused on developing a damage detection system for railway bridges using measurements on passing trains. In terms of our achievement, I can simply say we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for TRIG. Through TRIG, we have been able to transform technology readiness level of our innovation from two to four and that's simply because of the funding we received from trade but also all range of support from mentoring monitoring and also all the amazing networking opportunities we received this valuable aspect of trade has been the integrated the ever presence of connected places catapult in monitoring the entire process of the project in offering excellent networking opportunities and accessing to people that we simply wouldn't have had if it wasn't for TRIC. The main benefits goes around people and colleagues working at Connected Places Catapult who offer an all rounded innovation expertise and also very willing to offer support in taking the project to innovation to the next level. Sorry about that, Donya. <laughs> and thank you, thank you for joining us this afternoon. It's lovely to uh, to see you on the on on the uh, the thing list of participants. Um, there's so many questions, so I've asked James to come and give me a hand. My voice is probably about to go any minute. So do you want do you do one and I do one, James? Do you want to go like that? Okay, I'll start. Um, oh, I get the nice easy one. Um, anonymous says. What are the expected start and end dates of the project? Um, good question. So um, we are contracting all you guys on in March, and then we would like you to start your project early um, February, April. Sorry, I'm going backwards. Sorry. Um, and then all projects will be finished completely by September 2023. Awesome, I'll take the next one. Uh, from Hugh, um, can, can we apply for more than one challenge of the same project? Uh, so please don't, please pick the one that you think um, is most applicable um, to your idea. So if it's a maritime decarbonisation um, idea, I'd put it in the maritime decarb um, pot rather than the open call. I think also if you've got more than one um, sort of funding area that you can apply for, the open call is probably going to be more competitive, and so I think you probably have a better chance if you use one of the um, the themed calls. But um, yeah, please just put it into one. Um, we will sift out the same application that goes into more than one um, and decide which one we think is most most appropriate to. Okay. Anonymous says, if an academic from university is eligible to lead a project, does the proposal have to include any industries? Absolutely not. It's not necessary at all. An academic can lead a project um, and it doesn't have to have any involvement whatsoever from a commercial company. Um, Malachi Green asked about, uh, do I need to have a company uh, set up before submitting an idea? I'm a postgraduate student. Um, I think the, probably the best advice is yes. So we have had some very, very uh, fresh companies, so students who've come out of university uh, courses in uh, in a summer um, and then started setting out uh, setting up a company in sort of September October and applied then um, where we've you know we've 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 potentially had to delay the first payment because they didn't have a, a bank account that we could use um, that's a little bit sort of uncomfortable for everyone I think so best to best to get all those things set up in advance if you can um Question from anonymous back from Sortian. Um, do we need to be in a consortium or as an individual company is subcontracting allowed? Absolutely, you can. Oh, okay, so I think, I think there might be two parts to this question. Do we need to be in a consortium? Um, James, is the question is subcontracting is subcontracting only subcontracting only allowed if there's a consortium? 
I'm sorry, I'm not I'm not understanding the question. So so I think you, you don't need to be in a consortium. Um, no. You can be if you'd like. Um, there has to be a lead organization who's the organization that's receiving the money first. Um, yeah. and then that can be that can be passed on to others um, as per whatever you've put in the plan. So yeah. I think it's flexible beyond that, but there has to be some lead organization um, present. Yeah. And consortiums or individual companies can use the subcontract. Yeah. Julia, hello. Um, my lovely colleague, Julia. Uh, she's got a question for Daryl. Daryl, are you still with us? Hi, am. Hello. Hello. So, Julia, uh, my colleague at CPC, um, she works in our academic engagement team, and she's saying, could we have initial thought, your initial thoughts, as to potential interventions under the changing skills requirement? Would you like to see TRIG projects seeking to develop methodologies to understand, quantify, or address those? Yeah, well, we're open to that. I suppose what we've identified with the people in the skills challenge is that there's sort of an immediate and future skills shortage. So overall, any sort of idea that goes towards sol just solving that by by us. Okay. Thanks. Um, uh, IP, James? Uh, yes, so um, we're very much of, uh, of the opinion, um, Sonia, that IP should remain with whoever's going to exploit it. And that's certainly not um, DFT as a, as a big worry yeah. the department. We're, we're very poorly placed for that. So, um, no, we won't be looking to take any, any rights of any sort. Um, they're yours to go and exploit and go and do brilliant things with. Yeah, absolutely. Same as CPC. Um, Alan, um, when you, where you submit more than one application for different projects, do they have to be in different challenge areas? So yeah, so James has already sort of talked about this a little bit. Um, where you have, um, oh, okay. Um, they ideally, if you are applying to different, you need you need to put, if you're going to put different challenges, you need to put an application for each challenge and you're more than welcome to do so. So if anyone else is asking, can you apply more than once? The answer is yes, as long as you apply for different challenges. And and also one, one thing to add, Bex, is if, if you if you were successful for both let's mm. say or more than one um we'd want some some um what's the word for it some assurance that you had the capacity to deliver more than one project um otherwise we'd want to reduce that down potentially. yeah and that has happened before hasn't it we've had a number of teams um that have been fund or a number of organizations that have been funded more than one trade project um okay uh Dara, daryl can i get you back a minute sorry um Slava, does freight congestion also imply lorry movement outside of the port area or hub? Oops, sorry, trying to get to my butt. It does. That's all right. <laughs> it does. Um, I think what we're looking to do is just have that strong focus on intermodality and then how that broadly links to leveling up and the wider government agenda. So that's great. Thank you. No, no escape for you, Daryl. Um, Desmond, is, is there a limit to the number of people that can form a team? Um, no, as long as it's it's kind of managed in a, in a credible way. Um, yeah, yeah, up to you guys. I don't think there's any, any particular limit. Um, hey, Richard, um, recently applied for a smart grant scheme. Good luck on that. Can I still apply? Can I also resubmit my smart grant application alongside a trick application? Yes, you absolutely can. Um, we would we like to see um, in TRIG how we are part of a journey um, for our innovators. Um, however, of course, we need to be, we need some assurances on how TRIG feeds into the smart grant or where, TRIG, where TRIG's role is in the smart grant project. Um, assuming the smart grant project will be much larger than TRIG. So we'd like to see where, where TRIG fits in and how you're planning on uh, completing both of those projects concurrently. And, and just to add, we do we do talk to Innovate UK about uh, mm. what what gets funded, um, to try and make sure uh, as we do our due diligence that we're not we're not having different bits of government funding exactly the same piece of work because of course yeah. that would be um, that wouldn't be that wouldn't be right. So I, hopefully that answers that question. Um, Chris from uh, Zephyrus, is there a TRL requirement that we need to be at to be eligible? So typically, Trig is TRL two to four, so it's proof of concept. Um, occasionally things outside that um, are fundable. 
but it needs to have that sort of you're trying something out. I think where, where we go outside the, the, that, um, those TRL boundaries, it tends to be digital technologies that can progress really quickly uh, because your, your sort of design build test cycles can be so uh, cheap and quick. Um, but usually it's, yeah, proof of concept is, is the focus uh, for TRIG. Um, anonymous, are consortia made up of an industry and academic partner eligible? Absolutely. Um, we love these types of consortiums. They're really, really excellent for knowledge exchange and other commercial benefits. Um, is there a maximum percentage of project value that an academic partner can draw on? No, it's up to you guys to work out in your consortium who how you divide the funding. Um, Stephen, oh, I think one. I think I think we've covered uh, Stephen your question about consortium individuals. Yeah. Uh, is there anonymous? Is there is there a guideline for eligible costing? Yeah. So yes, there are some 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 there are some guidelines in the in the guidance document. I'd suggest that's the best place to, to go and look first, um, and it's it's pretty comprehensive. If you have any remaining questions, um, we'll pick that up um, yeah. further down the line. Mark, is there a limit on the number of applications an organisation can make? No, but please be sensible. <laughs> um, I, I don't think I don't think there is a there isn't a written rule, is there, James? No, no. But um, I mean, each each one takes a bit of time to write, so I'd, yeah. be, I'd be surprised if you um, came up with um, very large numbers. <laughs> um, Hitesh, uh, local tra transport decarbonisation is project looking at last mile delivery and scope. Um, Charlotte, if you're still with us, would you like to jump in? I am still with you. Uh, yep. So our uh, list of kind of interested areas is not exhausted, and uh, last mile delivery would be in scope with the kind of proviso that it does kind of demonstrate an understanding of a place based approach and meeting the needs of a local area or community. Thanks for that, Charlotte. Thank you. Um, and Hitesh again. Hi, Hitesh. Hope you're well. Hitesh used to be my boss. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> um, so this is another one for Daryl. Um, Under Future Freight is a project uh, exploring HGV and cycle safety in space. It is. Nice and easy. Thank you. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> James, question about CMDC. Yes, yeah, so if we've been involved in CMDC funding before, would I be right in assuming that you would determine our port to be on a decarbonisation journey already? Um, is that a question you'd like to pick up, Kate? Hi, yeah, I can pick that one up. Thank you. Um, uh, not straightforward answer. I guess it depends what your CMDC project was. Um, but as I kind of outlined the three areas we're looking to fund, one of them is projects that focus on supporting small and medium-sized ports, harbours and marinas to decarbonise their operations only if they have not yet started to do so. So if your CMDC funding started you on the path of creating decarbonisation plans for your port, marina or harbour and you're looking to do develop that a bit further with TRIG, it would be out of scope because we consider you'd already started that. If you've had CMDC funding to do something totally different, and actually this specific location hasn't yet got decarbonisation funds, that's fine. Um, if you've already done some decarbonisation plans, but you've now got another project that falls into one of the two other areas, so the deep sea shipping or the smart shipping that I talked about, that would be fine. But yeah, if you've already done anything, if your location has already got any decarbonisation plans from previous projects or previous funding, we wouldn't be looking to then duplicate that and it'd be out of scope with TRIG22. I hope that helps and doesn't confuse things even further. No, that, that was helpful, I think. Uh, Kate, thanks for that. It's just my one, James. Um, yeah. So if somebody's missed um, the example, um, I would probably suggest, could you watch the um, recording, which will be available in the next couple of days? Okay, let's go back to this. Um, will, so from Stephen uh, Luar, will projects be selected on the basis of a portfolio approach or in the order of best merit? Um, really good question. So we, it's primarily in order of best merit. We do make a few portfolio decisions around the edge to, to balance things up. So, so for example, if it was maritime decarb and we had a whole load of hydrogen projects and they totally dominated, we might look at some projects slightly lower down the list as long as they were over 
um, the minimum threshold to be for being a sort of a good fundable project. We might look um, down a little bit further, but primarily it's order of best merit. Um, this is interesting. Can a large organization, multi billion dollar revenue, I just say? Uh, yes, you can. We've had um, some instances where we've funded large businesses in the past, not recently, but we have um, as part of trade. Um, be interested to see what the motivation is. Um, but yeah, absolutely. James, I think, <laughs> yeah, I think that's always the question, isn't it? Because we, yeah. we do occasionally have big, big organizations coming in. It's like, well, why are you not funding this yourself? Yeah, why? <laughs> um, and because if it's a good idea, you know, chances are there'll be some internal funding you can find somewhere. <laughs> I mean, in the past, we have had people wanted to get involved in Trig, actually, not really that interested in the money. And actually, it's about it's about getting into the ecosystem and, and meeting stakeholders. So we, we judge things on on their merits, but there's no there's no fundamental barrier to, to large organisations being involved. There isn't. To be honest, if you're more interested in kind of um, getting, um, as James said, kind of insight into um, the market and kind of exploring opportunities for collaboration, things like that, um, the catapult might be a best bet because um, that's what we do day in day out. So. Um, I probably suggest you're yeah, just exploring our website and just seeing if you'd like to kind of get in touch with us. Um, is it me or you, Jess? I can't remember. I, I think that was your question, technically. I'm going to take this one. Right. Um, get, <laughs> Gary asking about um, whether, whether could Innovation for One Challenge trigger um, an idea in another? I think what you mean is, is, is would we move applications over? Mm -hmm. So I think we... We, we might do this, we reserve the right to do this. If we get loads in, in, in let's say, in one of the, um, the pots and there's, there's, um, there's a really good um, proposal that we don't have space to fund, we might move it into the open call if there was more space there. I think that answers your question. Um, but otherwise, if you'd written an application, it probably wouldn't be eligible for one of the, unless you rewrote it or something. I, th I think that's, I think that's answered the question, but um, if not, um, just drop us an email afterwards and we can, we can clarify. Um, Hitesh, um, can a project that has pre has had previous trade funding apply um, to progress the TRL further? Yes, we're always interested in hearing from past triggers. Um, the TRL would still need to be within the co the kind of limit for the, for the project. So we're not for, for, for trade, so we're not, really um looking at trls that um, exceed about four so as long as it's still within the trl um that would be fine yeah. um from uh rory b um we've had capability at higher trls which will support other capabilities how do we put that forward um i think if it's a new idea and it's a new thing you want to test out then it's it's eligible um i think i think that's the answer to 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 your question i think if you've got an idea that's already you know, demonstrated and working, um, then it wouldn't be um, eligible for trig. But you might have to do some new, something new in it, or some new subsystem, or some new component, or something, and that that could then be eligible for trig. Um, again, diff difficult to answer that question without without the specifics. Um, so I'd probably uh, suggest either sort of contacting us outside this meeting or or putting in a speculative application anyway, and we'll see. Okay, Anonymous says, are there any IP related conditions? Um, there aren't any conditions that I'm aware of. James has already talked about where IP sits. Um, what I would probably suggest if you have something specifically you wanted to talk to us about is get in touch um, via um, the mailbox. Um, we can, we're happy to discuss anything with you. Uh, okay, John Barlow. Aloha, Trig22. Aloha, John. Um, does your program allow for foreign islanders to participate? I mean, Hawaii. Oh, good for you. Good for you. I know. Um, lucky. Yeah, middle of British winter. I wish I was in Hawaii too. Um, so, so we 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 only fund UK organisations. So you'd have to have a UK partner who was the uh, who was formally bidding, um, but then you could work with them after that. Um, so, and some t so innovative energy converters. Um, anything that helps decarbonisation is, of course, of interest, um, and it's uh, it sounds sounds like it's in an interesting area, um, John. So um, yeah, I'd say um, if you've got a UK partner you can work with, and they can put the bid in um, as the as the lead bidder, then um, that should be of interest. 
Um, so Anonymous says, how will pollution IP be protected? I'm not sure I understand the question. So, so I think this may, maybe this is uh, a sort of, sort of um, what's the word for it, non-disclosure and, uh, and sort of. Yeah. So, so CPC are used to working um, with with um, with valuable IP um, and keeping it safe because that's. Oh, I see. Their... I think the question is. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I understand. What you mean. <laughs> yeah. So we would never disclose anything that is commercially sensitive. Um, we we publish at the end of the project a summary, um, which is a very high level analysis of the value add that triggers had for your business and for you as an individual. Um, but we would never pu publish any IP related to the technicalities of your solution. Or product and um, it's the same for, for dft so we treat um people's intellectual property as uh, as classified information and so it's not disclosed um, under any circumstances so it should be well protected um our additional scoring marks given for the use of smes um no <laughs> uh, I, I i think that's the the only answer to that question that um you know we treat all, all bids from all types of organizations equally can trust ports apply? I have no idea what a trust port is. Kate, are you? Is this <laughs> like, given its ports, it sounds like it yeah, might it be like a, one for you. Port thing. Yeah, I am just uh, trying to get clarity on that. So, if possible, that'll be one I'll come back to you on, Vicky. I must say, I'm afraid um, I'm not entirely clued up on trust ports and how that fits within the scope and uh, eligibility criteria. So we're going to put these answers into an FAQ, which will be available, aren't we, Bex? Absolutely. So we'll, so we'll make sure that's in there. Um, I don't know what a trust port is, but um, hopefully we'll all we'll find out. Thanks, uh, thanks, what we, Kate. What we do, what we'll do is we will clock at three thirty. But if we've got any outstanding questions, we'll pop those into the Q and A document. So yeah, you you will get the answers. Um, Mike uh, Handley asks, um, something I talked about earlier to you with another company will fit this very well. Can we both apply separately to max the capability? Um, so as long as you've both got different ideas that you're applying to um, prove the concept of, then yes, you can both apply separately, or you could both uh, apply together as one application um, to deliver a joint project. I think it depends on, on the context, but you shouldn't both apply with the same idea um, because we'll have to sift one of you out. Um, can you be a uh, anonymous? Can you be a partnership partnership registered for VAT? So not a limited company. We've been trading since nineteen ninety three. Um, I believe so. I'm going to ask for you to let me get clarification on that, though, if that's okay. We'll add that into the um, uh, FAQ document. Um, Tamara asks if you can if you can apply if you're less than two years old. Um, yes, you can. Um, will there be different due diligence for that, Bex? No, no. Um, it's um, if you can just mention to us that the fact that the reason you can't provide the, the uh, two years report and accounts is because you are physically not two years old yet, then that will be fine. Um, no problem. I'm a UK-based SME. Can I apply solely? Yes, you can, Mohammed. Um, Vitali, can a consortium include companies from outside the UK? Uh, yes, um, in the in the financial section. Uh, so, so the lead bidder will need to be UK-based, um, and in the financial section, you'll have to give if the application. You have to give details of um, who's doing what bits and who's getting what money. Um, but yes, uh, there's no limit in, in principle. Just to clarify a point on that, though, um, that the solution or technology has to be deployed eventually in the UK. Um, that's really important. Um, OK, George, does the proof of concept at the end of the project need to be physical or can it be a simulation? It really depends on the nature of the technology. So it could be a digital solution. It could be a physical like widget. Or it could be a, a, a piece of technology that would go, on a, go in, a, in a vehicle. You know, it really does depend. Um, the proof of concept, what we actually are expecting, we're not expecting to see something in action, we're expecting a report. Um, so some photographs of your technology would be lovely, um, or, or, or a video of how it works, but it doesn't matter whether it's um, 
a physical solution um, or a simulation of the physical solution, it, 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 it's fine. I think it would need to have the granularity to provide the right level of evidence. So mm -hmm. it's, got to, it's got to be convincing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's no reason it couldn't be a simulation. Um, Kev for Zuna, is there a, a ceiling percentage of how much the award can be spent with UK contractors? I lack some of the mobility and dexterity abilities, so we need assistance fabrication. Uh, so uh, n no, there's not a sort of uh, uh, a ceiling percentage, but I don't think we'd want to see someone applying for TRIG and they're not doing any of the work themselves and just subbing subbing it out immediately. So there'd have to be a decent amount of time and effort um, and, and clever stuff going on in that in that lead bidding company. Um, but from what you say, like um, subbing some of the um, some of the fabrication, that's pretty normal um, for physical projects. So um, yeah, no no problem there. Um, ben, Ash has gone unfortunately. Um... So Ben is asking, would improving recovery times from railway low adhesion systems caused by such severe weather be in scope for the um, <clears throat> for the resilience call cool. um, or best apply for open? Um, James, have you got any thoughts on this? Because I would probably say go for the um, go for the flood one, but the the transport resilience one. Um, I think so. I think I'd, I'd go go and check out the the guidance um, and make sure that that. Um, yeah, that rail adhesion was mentioned in there. I, th I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, well, one sort of slight question would be whether um, with, whether rail adhesion is a, it has a big link with ex with the severe weather or not. I mean, I know it gets cold and rails get sort of frosty and snowy. Um, but yeah, I, th I think it's uh, it sounds like it'd be in scope. Um, we can follow up with um, with Asher and get your uh, a precise answer on that and put into the FAQ. Uh, Mark, uh, can you provide direct links to the application guidance and grant specification? Um, it's all on the website. It's probably the best um, answer, um, and it should be nice and easy to find. I think if you struggle, um, drop us an email and we'll, we'll send you a link. Um, but it's uh, very Googleable. It's all on uh, Connect Places Catapults uh, pages. Ash, a lovely long question here. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what the question is because I think it's trailed off. Um, but I can't see a question in there. I think you might have run out of. Um, I think you might have run out of space. Ash. Can you um, e email us, Ash, and we can we can get back to you. Um, the university. Oh, sorry, James. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm taking. A uh, <laughs> as from from Zwen, uh, yeah. for the university, the fund will cover overhead. So yes. yes, all costs um, should be included. Um, it's just not VAT um, that we uh, we pay for the trick. Uh, Sean, can we say we are responding to two or more of the challenges? The main challenge you you can only apply for one challenge, but you can say in the application that actually we feel that this project also aligns well with another one of the challenges, but you can't apply with the same project to more than one challenge. Um, so from Anonymous, are technologies related to air pollution, i.e. exhaust or non-exhaust, uh, applicable to the local transport decarbonisation theme? I'm going to call in Charlotte, but I suspect her answer will be that it has to be local. Yes, exactly. Uh, we are we're really happy to have any projects that demonstrate additional co-benefits, but it needs to be primarily decarbonisation focused with that kind of local and place-based aspect to it. So it, it's kind of, it, will, it would depend on the project. Thanks, Charlotte. We've got a question about VAT from Dave. So Dave is a, representing a company that's not yet VAT registered. Um, why would this be a requirement if we are unlikely to recover VAT at the limit? Um, so we, if you if you can't recover VAT from HMRC directly, then there are caveats. Um, I would suggest, Dave, um, we take this offline because I might have to get some advice from our legal guys. And I think it would depend on how many uh, sort of things you were buying yourself as well. Yeah. And so what, what what elements of the 30K was, was vattable? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it's that, yeah, 
great way to take that. Um, Chris Solomon uh, from Zephyrus, uh, can we apply for the funds to cover part of our project costs if it's over 30k? So I think your question is, if we've got maybe a 60 or 100k project, can we apply for a trick to cover 30k of that? Yes, brilliant. We love a, love a bit of leverage, uh, makes the, the money go further and do bigger things. So absolutely. Another VAT question from Lu Feng says, in the application website, a VAT number is mandatory. Is a university exempt from VAT? No, a university is not exempt. You will still be subject to the same rules around VAT. Um, again, if you have a specific query as to why um, you can't provide a VAT number, then please do email us and we'll be able to help you. Cool. Uh, Chris, how rigid are the number of projects funded by various challenges? Our project probably wouldn't fit with the specifically themed challenges, so we apply under the open call. But the open call for 2022 is specified six funded projects, which uh, as compared to the bigger one in 2021. Yes, the open call is smaller this year. We may have some ability to extend that, um, but it depends on finances within the department. And we've only been able to announce uh, six projects this year. Um, I'm afraid you'd have to um, compete for the open call and, and hope for the best, I think, in this in this situation. Um, and we'll do our best to try and um, get more money into that pot, um, but there are no guarantees. Um, Northern Ireland, James, I think they are. Yes, they're part of the UK, so yes, they're included. Um, follow up question from Anonymous. Can you apply to different challenges? There's a project, yes, you can put in as many um, applications um, as, as you can put together um, and they should go into whichever challenge is most appropriate. Um, Anonymous says, we are, we are a business who are looking for new technologies to help us with freight. Is there any way we can connect to innovators to create a solution together through trade? Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, can you let us know um, who you are <laughs> and what you're thinking, um, and then we will be um, happy to help. Um, anonymous attendee, who owns the IP of the solution? Um, can existing technology platform be leveraged? Um, so you own it if it's your solution, um, and if you want to use an existing uh, data platform or, or something um, and create some kind of new service or product off the back of that, then that's, um, that's within scope, so um, absolutely. Oh, I was just typing the answer for the length of the project, but I might as well just say. Okay. Um, so length of the project is six months. Um, I assume you mean the project delivery period where the innovators will be uh, carrying out their project. So the, it will be April to September, which is six months. Cool. Um, can we have subcontractors from outside the UK? Yep. Yeah, um, as per earlier, yes, that's fine. The local authorities, yes, absolutely. Um, from Aaron uh, Gopinath at Vahanami, um, can we uh, can we use to develop the concept we have developed partly to TRL for to add features? I'm not quite sure uh, exactly what the question is here, um, but as long as you're trying out something new, um, it should be eligible. Um, if you're going from TRL four to TRL six, um, then it may well not be. But if you're trying something new, um, it should fall into scope. Hopefully that's a helpful answer. Great, thank you. Um, Pichon, Pichon, hello. Um, oh, thank you very much, you're welcome. Do you want to partner with the consortium has to be UK-based? The team thinking of developing something that needs to be started with an EU-based partner. Okay, so um, the lead partner um, has to be have a UK-registered office. Um, but no, not all the partners in the consortium have to be UK based. You can subcontract to um, international companies. But as I mentioned before, the, the the technology or the solution has to be eventually deployed in the UK because the DFT aren't going to fund solutions that are deployed in other countries. Although we are thinking about maybe changing that for, for the future. But yes, let's keep it simple for now. Um, uh, anonymous attendee, if you can apply for more than one, can you do it through the same login? Yes. Uh, good. Um, the guidance reads from Alan. The guidance reads about doing ten projects to be carried out by the applicant. 
is it is it acceptable for the project to be carried out by a research organization on the applicant's behalf? So you mean if you contract out research? Um, I think so yes, I suppose, because they would be a subcontractor. So I suppose that, yeah, so yeah, that would be fine. I think it's similar to the previous question. Where, yeah. You know, we're looking for the applicant to be adding some value rather yeah. than just being a sort of procurement vehicle effectively. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so as long as as long as you're 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 adding some value, Alan, um, it should be fine. Yeah. Um, Liam, does sustainable packaging in e-commerce shipped worldwide fit into the future freight challenge? And does it have a new project? Does it have to be a new project, or can it be something you've already been doing? Um, Daryl, I might pass to you for the uh, sustainable packaging and e-commercing part. Um, but for the second bit, I think if it's it does have to be a new project, so you can't just get money for something you're already doing, you've already developed. There has to be that, that proof of concept, trying something out element. Are you able to come in on worldwide uh, freight packaging, Daryl? Oh, we, we may have lost Daryl um, one way or another. But um, we will put that in that we'll have a chat with Daryl outside the meeting and come back to you on that, Liam. Uh, but it definitely does have to be something new. Sorry, is that, is it, is that Liam's question? You just... Yeah, Liam's, Liam's Sorry, done. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll have to done. come back to it. Okay, so Tess. Um, so Tess is from a university. Good question. Is it the individual or the institution that applies? Really good question. So it is the individual academic that applies, but that academic has to be part of a university. Um, so it can't be a freelance academic. Cool. Uh, Richard, um, research, development, deployment of a CAM roadmap. Please, can I speak to someone, see if this is within scope? So uh, doesn't sound like there's a there's a proof of concept of some sort of technology idea or some kind of innovation in there. That's uh, that's a product that's related to as a roadmap to related to innovation and technologies. So it is probably out of scope, but definitely um, yeah, have a chat with us if you if you don't want to sort of dive in and do an application and potentially um, sort of waste time proposing something that's that's that we're not going to fund. Sorry, I was scrolling down the answer. See some of the other questions. Um, okay, so sorry, I think we made a mistake on one of the slides. Um, if you've seen 8th of January anywhere, that's incorrect. The actual deadline is Sunday, the 15th of January. Okay, on deep sea shipping, uh, so Stephen Loire again, deep sea shipping and smart shipping autonomous solutions, is it mainly focused on vessel side technology? Are you still are you still with us, Kate? So I've lost my uh, people sidebar. Hello. Yes, sorry. Uh, my IT is running a little bit slowly. Um, so the question was on deep sea shipping and if we're purely focused on vessel side technology. Um, we're looking at a few different things. There is detail in the scope in the grant specification document, which is on the TRIG website, but um, within the deep sea sh shipping area, it's vessel propulsions. So batteries, fuel cells, all those different types of things. And um, propulsion systems using internal combustion engine technology capable of using multiple fuels, including zero carbon options, um, wind propulsion and different types of wind propulsion. Um, on vessel power generation and fuel production, and then low carbon energy storage and management. So that's kind of. Key things that live in the scope. Isn't it? Was um, thanks. Thanks for that, Kate. Was was smart shipping uh, in that list? And then, yes, we have a different. Oh, I think I think the DFT Wi-Fi. The DFT Wi-Fi is really patchy. I'm on it as well. Oh right, okay. So should we just move on to Key again? I think so. We'll we'll okay. pick that up in the FAQs, um, and hopefully we'll get Kate back at some point. All right. 
Um, okay, so Keegan said, will we, be, will we be able to build off or expand on previously funded projects that weren't part of the TRIP channel and are relevant in solving problems at hand? Yes, absolutely you can. James? Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm being kicked out of my right. room and I thought I had this room for longer, but apparently Oh, okay, no not. problem, don't worry, um, I'll, I'll, I'll cover the next one. Um, will TPC... And don't, TPC sorry, no, I'm only on Oh, call. take you back. <laughs> Um, so we were asking about smart shipping, Kate. Um, Sorry, I completely crashed. I don't know if you heard me. I was off doing right. my uh, monologue and then I realised I was completely frozen. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, <that's annoying. laughs> um, yeah, sorry, I'm conscious of time. But yeah, we have deep sea shipping and we have smart shipping. And then we have yeah. the other area that is about... Um, uh, ports that haven't started their decarbonisation journey yet. For the deep sea shipping, we've mostly focused on the vessel side. For the smart shipping, we haven't specified whether that's vessel side or shore side. It's any smart shipping technologies, autonomy, um, digitisation, any other kind of efficiencies, um, and we've not specified whether that's vessel side or shore side, so it could be either. Great. Thanks. Thank you so much, Kate. Okay, so Richard asked a really, really good question here about um, these the kind of... Um, supplementary support that is provided through trade um in kind of commercialization activity which is, which is a really valid one and the reason one of the reasons the dft is particularly keen on partnering with cpc to, to deliver trade um, and that's because we have a function that is available in our business to be able to support innovators in their commercialization journey yeah. so outside of your trig sort of project delivery work um we will be assessing your business needs or your research commercialization needs and attempting to kind of plug you into the innovation ecosystem whether that be kind of introductions or getting insight from buyers um understanding what your investment needs are um what your kind of marketing needs are what, what whatever you might need in in the in the commercialized commercial commercialization journey and and really helping to support you in that because like i say trig is a springboard essentially to innovation and um, we want your uh, product or project to succeed post-trig and in order to do that um, we do provide wraparound support for you um, a good question again about the sort of event at the end um, it's a chance for um, innovators to um, to present yeah. their findings and, and their projects um, we do it, I mean it depends we have a different remit each year for the kind of transport expo or transport showcase event um, sometimes we do invite external organisations, other times it's just kind of reporting back to DFT on the progress we've made, so it, it's a bit early to tell yet. Um, but if, if you don't have an opportunity to kind of collaborate at that event, there will be other opportunities for you to be able to get your brand and your ideas out there. So, sorry, Bex, I'm afraid all the, I'm back, but all the Q&As have disappeared. Don't um, worry. So that's fine. There's, 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 not a, there's not a lot left. Um, do you want to answer one from Aaron? He says, can we use Trig to develop a concept we have developed partly for TRL4 to add features? Um, if if they're new features and you're trying them out and they're, they're then going to be sort of modules or, or subsystems of that, that existing um, innovation, then yes, it should fall into scope. That should be right. Great. Um, Anonymous says, if our technology is above TRL4, but we wish to convert it into another mode of transport, is this project eligible? So, uh, eligible. so I would probably say, if the technology is above TRL4, what you need to do then go back is go back and take that that same technology to achieve a proof of concept, whether or not it's applicable in other tech, in other other applications. So then in that case, you're still going back to TRL2 to arrive at that kind of proof of concept. So I would probably say that in that case, yes, it is applicable. So still doing the research on that same technology to check applicability. So yes, that would be eligible. Um, so yeah, thanks, thanks a lot, Kate. Um, I'm not sure there's a question there from John. I'm just gonna skip that one. Um, Hitesh um, is saying um, projects looking at behavioural science, for example, relating to car sharing. Are they in scope? That's an interesting one, isn't it, isn't it James? Yeah, I think if you're, yeah. if you're again, if you're proving a concept, um, yeah, it should be in scope. We have had some great uh, behavioural projects over the years, but they're they're certainly a, a minority. Um, Ash is saying, can we use a technology from Norway to solve a potential threat to the UK power network distribution system? So are you essentially, are you talking about 
uh, I know you can't answer me, but <laughs> if you're thinking about buying uh, or implementing a solution from a different country to solve a UK problem, James, have you got any thoughts on uh, that? Yeah, I mean, as long as it's transport, there wasn't yeah. mention of any transport in there. Because um, the energy yeah. system, of course, is, isn't isn't uh, a transport thing per se, although transport depends on it. Um, so potentially, I think it would, um, yeah, if you were trying out um, something new in the UK, uh -huh. I mean, not not everything that works in another country will work here. Uh -huh. So yeah, good well-being scope. Great. Um, so um, Lu Feng is asking about the interview process. So once we've conducted an initial sift of all of the applications and scored them, the highest scoring applications um, get invited to an interview. So what we'll do is we'll have 45 minutes with each project team. It's a chance for us to get yeah, to know the team, to kind of speak to them and to ascertain their motivation and their passion for delivering the project. Um, we, we go into um, kind of different aspects like the challenge again and, and, and the solution and the innovative aspects, but also give our innovators a chance to, to, to pitch to us and explain the benefits of their solution. So it's a really nice process. Um, and that will take place in February next year. Um, so Anonymous is saying, James, if the idea is not technology or an app, can we still apply or do all the applications have to be tech or app based? Um, so we take quite a broad um, definition of technology. So lots of people think of tech as digital stuff. Um, it's not, it's any, any kind of uh, applied science leading to some kind of new capabilities and new benefits. Um, so yeah, we take a broad a broad approach to, to what technology means, not just tech and apps. Um, Stephen is asking, uh, Kate, I think Kate's gone, isn't she? Yeah. Um, so to clarify, less on maritime shore side technology. Yeah. Is that what I, I, I mean, there's. I'd, I'd say go and go and read the guidance first, um, yeah. and then if you've still got questions, please do come back to us, and we'll try and uh, clarify. I I don't think there was a presumption that it was more or less on on shore side or or not. Um. Okay. Anonymous is a postdoc researcher on a fixed term contract. Absolutely, you can be relieved. Um, okay, what we're going to do is we are going with oh, we've got, oh, we've got one more question, Bex. I can see a question now. You got three more. Got three. Oh, no, three more. <laughs> okay. uh, so, from Chris, is there a presentation or pitch during the interview? Um, yes, we'll be asking you to, to present your idea and tell us why you think it's beneficial. So, absolutely. Um, a couple of people have been asking. So, we're going to put together a Word document outlining all the questions and the uh, application so you can you can draft them on that. But what we'll do is, because people can't see the word counts on the platform unless you go on to the next question, so we'll put all the word counts on there for you so you know what you're dealing with. Um, I'm hoping that will be done tomorrow and that will be available for everyone. We'll pop it on the website. Last question. James, go for it. Um, Jock's asked, uh, Jock Boyle has been asking if there are, are reasonable adjustments that can be made for, for dyslexia. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, if you if you uh, if you find the way that we're asking for applications difficult, um, please tell us, um, and we'll make uh, reasonable adjustments because we're really keen to hear everybody's ideas. Yes, absolutely. I think we're done. Thank you so much for your questions, everybody. I realise we're running out um, over now. Um, so just kind of leaves me to say thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Um, we hope you found it useful, and we will put as James said, all of the questions and answers into a document, so you've got a record of them. Um, please do get in touch if you need anything, and just wishing everyone a very happy, relaxing, festive season, and we look forward to uh, receiving your application in the new year. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Thanks to our, um, our my DFC colleagues who came to talk about their priorities. Some have had to leave, um, but yes, thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, CPC, for hosting, and um, Best of luck. Um, yeah, really excited to see um, what you guys think we should be uh, we should be engaging with. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye.